getting set up. Uh, this is going to be fast and exact analyses for LRU caches by Valentin Touzeau, uh, Maisa, Monio, and Reinecke. And it will be Valentin giving the talk. Yes. So thanks for the introduction. So um, I said I will talk about uh, cache analysis. So first, so why would one need to perform some cache analysis? So here are two examples of domains that make use of cache analysis. So the first one is for real-time systems, because in addition to be logically correct, uh, these systems need to ensure they will meet their deadlines. And because caches has an impact on the execution time, you need some cache analysis to retrieve precise bounds on the execution time. Another example is for security. Uh, it has been shown that an attacker can retrieve some secret data by targeting caches, and some approach use cache analysis to bound the information leakage. So here is the first uh, reminder about what is uh, a cache. So it's a small but fast memory uh, located somewhere between the, the core where the computation occurs and the main memory which aims at speeding up information retrieval from the main memory. So the idea is that the first time you access a block, like A in this example, it won't be in the cache, so this is called a cache miss, uh, as described by the previous speaker. And thus you, are, you will retrieve it from the main memory. And when doing so, you will load a copy of the blocks into the cache, such that next time you access it, you can retrieve it much faster. And this is called a cache hit. So what we would like to do is to classify accesses into the one that leads to a hit and the one that leads to a miss. Um, the problem is that this is undecidable in general, and so we have to perform some abstraction to make the problem tractable. And so what is currently done, which is um, usually done in the domain of cache analysis, is that you consider that you abstract the program into its uh, control photograph decorated with the accesses. So here is uh, an example. And our goal is to classify every accesses into one of these three categories. So the one that always leads to a miss, like the first access to X, if you start from the empty caches. The one that uh, always leads to a hit, and the one that can lead to both a hit or a miss, depending on the execution path. So the problem we solve is a different one from the previous speaker. We assume that uh, everything is given, uh, and we analyze binary. And what we try to do is to certify that some blocks always leads to a miss, some other leads always to a miss. Uh, we show in our paper that uh, these classification problems are NP hard. And in this talk, I will describe uh, the analysis we came up, which is uh, efficient in practice to solve this problem. So before doing so, I will first give you some background about what is the least recently used uh, policy and how it works. And then I will uh, briefly mention two existing analyses that perform analysis of uh, least recently used caches because our current work is based uh, on these two analyses. So um, the basic idea behind the least recently used policy, um, okay, no, first, <laughs> Uh, what's the one crucial question when you are analyzing cache is what happens when the cache is full and that you need to store additional data inside. So then you have to choose a block to evict, and this choice is done by what is called the replacement policy. And in our case, we'll focus on the least recently used policy because it's one of the easiest to analyze. So. It basically works by keeping uh, blocks sorted uh, from the most recently used one, uh, which uh, is uh, index zero, to the least recently used one with index three, and by maintaining this order when accessing uh, access, so accessing blocks, <laughs> sorry. So for example, on the left, if you access a block E, which is not cached, then you will put it at the most recently used position, and every other block will be shifted by one logical position. And the last one, A, which is the least recently used one, will be evicted, and the name of the policy. In case of a hit, then you also put, it, put the access block uh, at the most recently used position, and you simply shift the one that were younger, meaning that the one that were recent, um, accessed more recently than the one you are currently accessing. 
So this policy is one of the most uh, widely studied and one of um, the most widely spread analysis is the Mayan must analysis from uh, Christian Ferdinand. And uh, we based our work uh, on this one and I will also describe our previous attempt uh, from, CAF de Milis, uh, from CAF 2017 uh, because we will use some uh, abstraction we used in this approach. So this is our goal. This is the classification we want to achieve. And this is the one achieved by the May and must analysis. So it's only predict that some blocks, all, um, some accesses are always hit, that some of those are always miss. But because it is incomplete, you cannot tell anything about the remaining blocks. They can both lead to a hit and a miss, or either being uh, always miss or always hit. So in our previous approach, uh, we, we complete these two analyses by a third one, what we call definitely a known analysis, which is also sound but incomplete. And finally, what we did is that we refined the remaining blocks by calling a, a model shaker where we encode the classification problem. And I will briefly describe one of the abstractions we use in the model shaker because we reuse it in the current work. So the idea is that for the LIU policy, uh, if you're only focusing on one block at a time, so like A in our example, you can know exactly where A is in your cache by only remembering the blocks that are younger than A. So in the first example, you know that B and C are younger than A, and this is the only information you need to know to exactly know where A is into the cache. And you don't even need to remember that B is younger than C. So in case A is the most recently used block, then there is no blocks younger. So the younger set, which is the set we remember, so B and C is in the first example, is simply empty in the second example. And in the case that A is not even in the cache, then we use a special value epsilon. So to make it more concrete, uh, here is an example of how the model checker approach uh, performs on the small examples. So basically, all the accesses except the last one are already classified by the previous pre-analysis, so may, must, or definitely unknown. And so what we want to do is to classify the last access to A. And so we will focus on this one, and starting from an empty cache, so represented by epsilon, we first access A, so now we know that A is the most recently used block, so there is no possible blocks younger than it. And when we start uh, to meet all the blocks, we simply add it to the possible younger sets. And when you have different paths that are joined, then you simply keep the union of all possible younger sets. And at the end, this will tell you that A is always a hit in this situation. So we reuse this idea of block focusing into uh, our current work. But in addition, we perform um, some further simplification of the abstract value we manipulate. So the main idea is that if you are looking at classifying blocks that always leads to a hit, for example, then any younger set that, uh, okay, imagine that you have a younger set that you know will lead to a hit after a sequence of accesses, then any younger set which is included in this first one will also lead to a hit after the same sequence of accesses. So for example, in the situation where X and Y is younger than A, uh, after accessing double V, uh, you end up in a situation where A is a hit. Then you know for sure that in the other situation where X is the only one um, younger than A, you will also end up to, in a hit after accessing double V. And so you can simply get rid of the second situation um, and keep only the younger sets that are maximal in the sense uh, of the inclusion. So in, in this case, we would get rid of the one only containing X and only focus on the younger set X, Y. So here is how it perform on our previous example. So basically, uh, the abstract value we have are exactly the same except after joining because here you have two different uh, possible younger sets. Uh, B and BCD, and because B is subsumed by BCD, you can just get rid of it. 
and uh, you will reach the same conclusion that the last access to A is always a hit. So um, the improvement does not seem very impressive on such a simple example, but it can, in practice, lead to an exponential speed up and, to, and reduce dramatically the size of the abstract values. So here are the operations we need to uh, implement this abstract domain. So the first one is when you access the block you are focused on. So A in our example. And in this case, you know that, uh, again, there is no blocks younger than A uh, after accessing A. So the only possible younger set is the empty set. When you access a block which is not the one you're focused on, you simply add it to the possible younger set. So if the possible younger sets were C and D, E, you end up with C and CDE. And because C is subsumed by CDE, you just get rid of it. The same happens when you join uh, cache, uh, when you join two different paths, as we did in the previous example. And finally, we need a last operation, which is a truncation operation. Because when one younger set, uh, BCDE in this example, reach the cache size, then you can be sure that you cannot classify any access to A as always it anymore. So you can just replace uh, your abstract value by the epsilon singleton. And all these operations can be nicely implemented using a zero suppressed decision diagram, uh, which are a variation of BDDs, which is efficient to represent sparse data. So when we have a small set or small younger sets, uh, this choice is uh, very interesting. So we implemented our approach uh, into a plugin of Ottawa 2, which is um, a worst case execution time uh, estimation tool. And we run our uh, our plugin on a set of 15, 50 benchmarks taken from the Tackle benchmark suite, and we analyze uh, L1 instruction caches. And the aim of this experiment was first to compare our new analysis to the most widely spread, which is approximate, uh, which is um, the may and must analysis. And secondly, we are aiming at comparing our new approach to the previous one that used a model checker. So first, we're comparing our analysis to the may and most one. So on the left, you have the comparison of the execution time of the two analyses. So you can see that our analysis is um, a bit slower than the may and most one, which is uh, completely expected because our analysis rely on the may and must analysis, but it's um, always uh, faster than four times the time needed by the may must analysis to perform. And in this additional times, it can uh, classify all the 80% remaining blocks that were left unclassified by the may and must analysis. We also compared our approach to the previous one, which was using the model checker. And as you see on the figure, we are always faster. And the bigger are the benchmarks, the bigger is the speed up. In average, our new approach is 24 times faster. And for the bigger benchmark, it's more than 700 times faster. And you can look in the paper for the additional details for the memory, but we are also consuming less memory. So as a conclusion, so we have uh, an exact analysis for the least recently used uh, caches, which is much faster than any existing uh, exact approach, because uh, to our knowledge, the, our previous attempt is the only one that we are performing such a classification. Uh, we also have some uh, complexity results in the paper. And because our new approach uses abstract interpretation rather than a model checking approach, um, it can be easily combined to existing domains to reintroduce um, back in the model uh, some part of the semantics of the program to um, take into account the loop conditions and test conditions. Uh, and get rid of the assumption that all paths are feasible in the graph. Uh, thanks for your attention. If you have any question, uh, I will be happy to, to answer.
some questions? Uh, when you say your analysis is exact, it's exact after an abstraction. It's yes. And uh, so in this exactness, you lose arrays. So how do you handle arrays element? OK. Um, so there is two different uh, questions in this one, I guess. <laughs> Uh, arrays are related to data caches, so currently we're only focused on in instruction caches. So I will get back to our uh, analyzing data caches, if you like. And the second one um, is concerning the exactness. So yes, indeed, our analysis is only exact uh, relatively to the model where we consider all paths visible in the control program. Okay, so I come back for analyzing uh, data caches. Um, a data cache analysis can be uh, seen as uh, two different steps. So the first one is building the, the graph with the decorated with accesses, and the second one to how to use this graph to classify accesses. So for this second steps, you can use this work. Uh, if you have a graph decorated with the accesses, uh, the same approach uh, will uh, work you will slightly need to adapt it because data caches uh, also handle uh, write accesses. So you will have to adapt it slightly because the read and write are not handled in the same way um, by data caches. But the main challenging part is coming up with a, a decorated CFG where the access are represented. And for this, uh, uh, this is not covered by our work, uh, so maybe a pointer I can give you is to look at the work of uh, Clément Galabria, which was Balabria, sorry, which was presented in VM Climb this year and which has a, a base paper award where he used some uh, polyedra domains to track values stored into registers and so on. Other questions from the live audience? There's one from Slido. Uh, could this approach be adapted to other replacement policies? Okay. Um, the younger set abstraction cannot apply uh, directly, at least, uh, to other replacement policy. So you cannot apply directly this work, but there is some uh, possibilities to use uh, the result of this analysis for other replacement policy um, by using approaches called um, Oh, I don't remember the name. Okay. Yes, reactive competitiveness, thanks. <laughs> uh, the idea is that when you have a, a given sequence of accesses, if you can have bound the number of uh, misses you have using uh, the LIU policy, for example, then you can use these bounds to get a new bound uh, valid for another replacement policy. But uh, you will lose the exactness uh, of, the, of the analysis. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Thank you. And let's thank you. We made it to the end. This is the end of Popple 2019.